Hey guys, welcome back. It's Michael. It's Jen. And we're wildly graceful. Today we are hooking up the Coleman Lantern 17B to Ruby. Uh, so we're going to highlight the brake controller. We're going to highlight the sway bars. Stay tuned. It's hot. It is hot. <laughs> So we're uh, about to go ahead and hook her up. Um, again, uh, we're going to use our sway bar. Uh, we're going to talk about hitches real quick. And uh, here we go. Hey guys. So we're going to talk hitches first uh, before we actually connect. When we went to Gander RV to pick up our RV, right, I said, okay, I obviously need a hitch to pull a trailer. So we thought, okay, um, we have a hitch, right, both of our vehicles. Uh, both Ruby the Forerunner and um, we haven't named her, but the Palisade have factory installed tow hitches. So we thought we just need a tow receiver uh, piece that goes in there that um, can carry 5,000 pounds, right? So we went to U-Haul and what we did is we picked this guy up, which looks pretty beefy, you know. I can pick him up with just a few fingers. Um, it holds 7,500 pounds, trailer weight. 3,000 something, 7,500 pounds. Um, what you see on the back end is a locking, uh, a locking bar so that uh, somebody doesn't steal it. But um, and it cost me about 40 bucks or, or so. Um, the max tongue weight on this is uh, 750 pounds. It's got the right size, um, the right size receiver ball. So we were like, okay. And when we showed up, um, they were like. Uh, that's a no-go, right? Um, so if you're planning on picking up your trailer, you want to make sure that you have uh, the right the right tow hitch. Um, I just don't recommend those. I thought I recommended them and then I really studied up on them. Um, those are like fixed to your car, right? So they become part of your car. They're just a, a little piece that sticks out. There's no movement. If, if there's any movement at all, and I'm going to draw a diagram, we're going to go inside and I'm going to draw a diagram about what happens. You hear people talk about white knuckle driving with trailers and RVs. That's really caused by air. Sounds crazy, but it really is. It's the air movement and air displacement that causes when, when like a semi is coming down the road and you're in a two lane highway and you're coming up the road, that semi is displacing air. And so are you, right? You have a big RV behind you, you're displacing air. When both of those get to the same area, that air has nowhere to go. So what does it do? It gets in this violent fight, kind of like if you were fighting a bear. But it gets in a very violent fight and it starts moving like this, right? And it pushes on the tractor trailer. The tractor trailer is bigger than you are. So ultimately it starts pushing on your trailer. And if your trailer is connected via that hitch to your car, guess what? Your trailer and your car start moving all over the road, right? Because it has nowhere to go. So it's going to move the back end of your car that causes that sway, which can lead to a fatal accident and a catastrophe. So what does a sway bar hitch do? What does a sway hitch do? This is an easy lift. This is the one we chose. It's about $700. Um, so it's not cheap. It's 40, 50 bucks, $700. A lot more expensive right? I cannot pick this up with one hand. There is just, there is just no way. This is probably um, a good 75 pounds just by itself. Um, the towing capacity on this one is 15,000 pounds. The tongue weight on the ball uh, is 600 pounds. So um, it just, I think I'm wrong. Let me see. I want to say it's more than that. I might be wrong. 6,000 pounds, weight carrying, weight distribution. Is it 600, it's 6,000. 600, yes. Um, 
the max tongue weight is, I'm sorry, the max tongue weight with weight distribution is 1,500 pounds. So 750, 1,500, twice as much. The cool thing about this, and I'm gonna to try to do this without getting oil and grease all over myself, is do you see how this kind of pivots, right? That allows your trailer that's connected to you to sway a little bit, right? And the sway happens here on the hitch. It doesn't happen and move your entire vehicle. So it allows this to pivot a little bit. So your trailer to kind of rock a little bit because of that air, but your, your main unit stays the same. The other interesting piece about this is you see these big giant bolts. Well, in this piece here, this piece controls the height of this ball in relation to how it connects to the trailer and your tow vehicle. So I could actually raise this up. I could lower it down. Maybe if I added springs to my tow vehicle, I'd need to lower it down and I would just untake these bolts and adjust the height of this and then put it back together. So it's, it's totally adjustable. Um, these big holes here are where our, our sway bars are actually going to go into and we're going to show you that. I just really wanted to highlight the difference between just your store-bought little, little hitch and what a weight distribution sway bar hitch looks like. It's worth the $700. You want to spend the money. It's for safety. Um, plan for it in your expenses. Do not skip on this. Let's go put it on the truck. All right, today we're talking safety as well. Um, if any of you have ever had your fingers pinched in anything, using and installing this device because it's so heavy and hard to maneuver is, uh, is a key area where it might very well happen. Uh, so I wear gloves, so highly recommend that you do the same thing. So uh, one other safety point I want to, to talk about is chalk blocks. Uh, you'll notice that while it's parked here in front of the house, um, we have the wheels chalked both front and back. Even though it's on a little bit of an incline, the odds of it moving backwards are pretty small. Always chalk the wheels front and back. Leave these chalks on. So while you're backing your vehicle up and you're connecting it to the ball hitch, um, so when you're connecting your balls to the tongue, leave your uh, chalk box on, all right? So now let's pick up this bad boy and let's go slide it in. This is an awkward thing. Um, the best way I've found to do it is just grab the ball and heave ho it. Again, it's about 75 pounds. And she just slides, she just slides right in. Uh, once you get her kind of in, there's obviously a place for you to insert your pin. Uh, and you're just going to wiggle it around until you get your pin inserted. And I tend to find that picking it up on the bottom and kind of taking the weight off of it helps get your pin in and then don't forget your locking pin as well which is hard to do with gloves and we're just going to lock in the pin and we're not going to lock it all the way just because i'm going to pull it out after but there you go that hitch is installed that's only about 50 percent of it because what we got next is what you see laying on the ground there and those are the sway bars once we get it connected the other thing I want to highlight, uh, unless you want your trailer to go Roman, um, put a put a lock on it. So here you can see we have a lock that prevents anyone from just backing up and pulling our trailer in the middle of the night. If somebody really wants your trailer, um, they're going to be able to bolt cut this. The idea is we're slowing them down just enough that it's just not worth it. They're going to roll on to the next guy's trailer and they're not going to take yours. I put these on in our uh, campsites as well. Just not that anyone's going to pull out with our camper in the campsite. Hopefully not with us in it. That'd be awkward. So, uh, just some things to highlight. All right, let's back her up. Let's back her up, baby. Windows down. He usually can do this by himself.
Okay, let's try that. You're gonna roll forward though. Do you want me to lower it? Sure. Okay. We've learned that since we live on a slope, that the minute he puts on the parking brake and releases um, his foot, our trailer rolls forward. So one quick thing, um, that was a first time backup, right, uh, ball right under the tongue. Um, if you do not have a really good backup camera, Stella has a backup camera that's amazing. Why? Because it's not only a really clear picture. That's Ruby. Of, I'm sorry. <laughs> Ruby um, has a really good backup camera. So she's really crystal clear, but she also has a line that shows me the center of the forerunner Wait, and projects it backwards. Oh, yeah. uh -huh. So, <laughs> more blooper reel. So, um, that really helps me understand where the trailer uh, is in relation to where the ball is, so I'm able to project it. If you don't have one, you can get backup cameras for like a hundred bucks, less than that, a hundred and fifty dollars. They're worth the investment. Um, and then you saw Jen just lower her right down on. Um, so let's talk about this little guy here. So this little guy here was the first mistake we made. Um, remember I told you that I pulled up, right? I pulled up on this guy and it wasn't releasing. And I was like, man, I'm cranking my tongue jack up. I'm cranking it up and it's lifting my whole car up. Why is that? Because in addition to pulling it up, you need to pull it back, right? And then when you put it in, you need to make sure that it actually goes under. So if you look at this, this isn't correctly connected, right? Because it's not going under, which tells me that either I'm not far enough down or I'm not aligned correctly. So I'm going to actually put all the weight. I'm going to take all the weight off our blocks and see if I can get her to click in. Okay, we are now 100% off our blocks. You'll notice that she's going under but not 100%. So if I move the truck a little bit, she'll slide right in. So I'm gonna go do that. I'll show you how it connects. We still have truck blocks in. Ooh, sweat's dripping. So, see that? I just moved her a little bit and now I'm in. This little pin here, very important. So this prevents me, again, I'm not gonna put it all the way on, but this prevents anyone or me or vibrations or wind or sacred spirits, I don't know, but it prevents that from moving, all right? So now I'm connected. Theoretically, I can tow. Again, if I tow in this configuration, um, my, my sway is not gonna be connected. Right, so now this solid piece is connected to the trailer. When the trailer moves, the rear end of Ruby is going to move as well. So, um, I wanna highlight one thing. We're gonna kinda step back and we're gonna look at this configuration um, just so you can see how even it is. It's actually very flat, right? So while, while the connection points are all very, very flat and connected, I've seen some where the trailers dip way down or they have, they have springs in there and it's, it's really high up. You want it to be pretty flat. And we're on an inclined driveway. When we're flat, this whole thing is flat. So if your trailer isn't flat, uh, that's a problem. These bars, also pretty heavy, probably about 15 pounds solid steel. And they just connect in here and go all the way down to you hear a click. They come all the way over, and they actually go up and into that, okay? There's a, there's a little mechanism to kind of force them up in there, and then they lock in, and then you'll see as this moves, right, my, my pivot point up here is moving. 
So if the trailer were to wiggle, the wiggle is going to happen here. It's not going to move the back end of my trailer. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Um, and you might go like, well, how the heck do I get those up there? They give you a handy dandy little bar. And the handy dandy little bar. Um, teacher, teacher, no. Teacher. Just goes into. So wait, there's a little brass. I can't even get it in the camera. Can't, can't find it. There's a, can you point to it? There's a little brass knob on the end of this grab bar, and that goes inserted into the hole on the side of the sway bar holder. Let's go ahead and stick it. In. I'm going to stick it in now. the hole. Oh no, you have it right. You have it right. Struggle right. this every time. We do. And the idea is here, I'm lifting it up and then I'm at a point where I can now get it. It's normally not this hard, it's because we're on a sloped driveway. Yeah. Usually we pull out of the driveway and hook her up. So um, you're not gonna get the benefit of me hooking her up because I'm not gonna move my trailer. I'm sorry. Um, this is an interesting thought though. And I'm just going to play with it. That's what I said. Because you might not have been wrong. No. You might have been very right. Wait, wait. You might actually have been, well, not might. You are right. That was the way to use it. Thank you. Um, and then you secure it. So now this can't come out. All right. Um, so let's talk brake. And, and you just do the same thing on the other side, right? So uh, again, we're in our driveway, we're not going anywhere, so I'm not hooking this up. So this controller is part of the part of the brake controller. Some people have said they have um, connected the brake controller themselves. Uh, kudos to you. So let's go inside real quick and let's look at the brake controller just very quickly. And I'll talk about the control unit and then I'll show you how it's connected to the trailer. can take this guy. So in here we have the brake controller. Um, she's not on right now because it's not connected. When I show you that when I connect it you'll see her. Yeah, right now she says on top NC. NC stands for not connected. All right? But it's really simple. They just bolt it onto the onto your dash. Actually turn my AC down because you're gonna hear that and not me. Um, and it's meant to just kind of sit here, be connected to your trailer, and activate the electronic brakes on your trailer. So it activates with the press of my pedal. It also can be activated manually by depressing the switch. So once it's all connected and I start rolling, I test it by pushing on this, and the trailer brake should activate and actually slow the rig down. If it doesn't work, then that means your brake controller is not working correctly. Your brake controller just has a cord that comes out of the back of it. Um, part of it goes to power and part of it goes into your trailer harness, uh, which runs to the back of your vehicle. So it takes them, you know, less than an hour to install this. I'm going to hand the camera back to Jen. Um, and really, it's pretty simple. It goes to your seven pin connector in the back that you're already going to have installed or you're not towing a trailer, right? So in the back here, uh, underneath, which I'm not going to show you again, is a seven pin connector. The seven pin connector, um, okay, I'm going to get to lay on the ground. This is going to be fun. It's right here. So, um, on the bottom of the Forerunner, we have a four pin connector, not what we use for towing this big of a trailer. Um, and then we have a seven pin connector, that is your plug. So in that seven pin connector that clips in here is uh, all your power for your lights on your trailer. So when you step on your brakes, it comes on. When you turn on your lights, it comes on. But also, hi. Um, but also, it's kind of warm down here. Also, it has um, 
you know the 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 sensor comes through for your trailer brakes so you can manually activate them and such so it, that's how it connects um, i recommend a professional install uh, unless you're like an auto mechanic rebuild cars um, i wouldn't do it all right so this little piece of uh you got a money shot there sorry uh this little piece here where's my dollars Right, dollars make your hollas sorry this little family piece show. family show this little piece here uh, just simply connects to to your trailer connection um, what this is is a breakaway switch meaning if somehow this cool thing that we just hooked up were to come apart and my chains were to break and not effectively hold let's talk chains for a second uh, but not effectively hold it it would actually pull out of this little piece right here. You can kind of see this little box. This pin would pull out. It would lock up my electronic brakes on my trailer so that theoretically my trailer would stop if it were to ever break away uh, from, from Ruby. So Stella got totally crazy and said, I don't want to be part of this show anymore and broke away. Theoretically, she would come to a stop. Probably not in the best condition. So you don't want that to ever happen. Uh, let's talk chains. Um, some people just take the chains and they take the chains on the right side and they hook them up to the right side. I've seen it done a whole bunch of ways. I can tell you that the way we were trained in the military, hauling things way bigger than this, uh, were to create a basket, right? So you take the right side and go to the left side. You take the left side, you go to the right side. And what did I just do? Underneath, I've crossed my chains Right, I've created a bit of what we call a basket. So if this again were to break away, uh, this tongue would fall into the basket and hopefully not hit the ground. It, it probably would. At that point, you really don't have a whole lot of control. But if, and hopefully you notice it, you'd be able to, to try to stop the situation as quickly as possible. Um, if that ever happens, you're gonna hope that you're still somehow connected electronically to your trailer to be able to use your trailer brakes. Because uh, if you were disconnected and you slam this on, that is going to actually come crashing into your tow vehicle. So always try to use your trailer brakes as much as possible. Let's talk about trailer brakes really quickly. Because um, I've heard all kinds of things about trailer brakes. Um, when, you're, when you're going downhill, trailer brakes become really important. Um, you want to try to use the trailer brakes as much as possible in equal amounts to the amount of braking that you're doing in your tow vehicle. Meaning you don't want to apply the, the trailer brakes so hard that it's trying to slow your vehicle, right? Because uh, then you kind of have this, this really weird like pulling sensation on your trailer, which is not good. Nor do you want to just be using your tow vehicle brakes and not use your trailer brakes because then you have this incredible force on the back of your tow vehicle right which again can create swaying so the safest thing to do is to apply it in equal amounts depending on your vehicle um, that setting on that brake controller there's a little wheel there I have it set about 50% depending on your vehicle depending on how big your brakes are um, depending on where you're driving um, all of that factors into where you want that setting if you're going down a huge downhill you probably want that setting a little higher if you're just cruising on open flatlands across the prairies, probably don't need that as high. You can crank it back to middle or maybe even a little bit less. All right. Um, brakes, very important. Uh, again, Jen and I opted for the safest option that we could. We don't have a huge, sorry, Ruby. Um, we don't have a huge Toyota Tundra up here that can tow heaven and earth. Um, we have a relatively low tow capacity vehicle of 5,000 pounds. We have a trailer that's probably, with everything that Jim put in it, uh, probably close to 4,000 pounds. Um, and we wanted the safest option. So, weight distribution hitch with a sway bar. Weight distribution hitch with a sway bar. Um, really, really important. Do not skimp. I've seen some for $150, $200 and they just look chintzy. They look like, like dollar store sway bars. Um, it'll give you a false sense of confidence that you have a sway bar. I just wouldn't do it. I would spend the money, get a really good sway bar and weight distribution hitch, get a brake controller. Literally the brake controller was $180. Um, 
highly recommend both of those. If you have questions, if you want to know which ones we're using, we'll put links down below. Um, I just want everyone safe and really enjoying their controller, their, their controllers. Um, my controller is Jen. If they... Uh, right. <laughs> we just want everyone safe uh, and really enjoying their campers. Um, and we'd love to see you out on the road sometime. Have a safe and great time. Thanks.